President of the United States, Donald J. Trump. synagogue shooting in Poway, California, just happened. Our entire nation mourns the loss of life, prays for the wounded, and stands in solidarity with the Jewish community. We forcefully condemn the evil of anti-Semitism and hate, which must be defeated. Just happened. And we are grateful to the law enforcement personnel for their courageous response, incredible response today by law enforcement. And I especially want to recognize 
a certain off-duty Border Patrol agent who bravely returned fire and helped disrupt the attack and save so many lives. Border Patrol. And I also want to thank Mayor Steve Voss, had a great conversation, and Governor Gavin Newsom had a great conversation. And we stand together. We will all get to the bottom of it. We're going to get to the bottom of a lot of things happening in our country. Together, we're building a new chapter of American greatness, one founded on the idea that all citizens are entitled to live in safety, prosperity, and peace. This is an exciting time for our great country. This is an exciting time for America. Just yesterday, it was announced that the United States economy grew some people thought unexpectedly, not me, I didn't think. <laughs> In fact, frankly, if we had the Obama interest rates, low, almost nothing, actually nothing. And if we had quantitative easing instead of tightening, we used this conservative approach. We would have been even much higher than this, but this is very high, far greater. First quarter is always, for the most part, it's the lowest quarter. We did 3.2 percent in the first quarter. GDP plus expectations and accelerated our economic growth. And that was with a shutdown, that was with a lot of different things, that was with bad weather, that was with everything you can imagine. 3.2 in the first quarter, usually the lowest and worst quarter. In Prime Minister Abbey, we're negotiating trade deals because every country has been ripping us off for years. And I really like the Prime Minister, he's a friend of mine, but I said, Mr. Prime Minister, we got to do something. For so many decades, we've been losing tens of billions of dollars to China and Japan and India and name any country. And we lost. But we're not losing anymore. And I said, listen, we got to do something. $68 billion in trade losses over the last four or five years, a year. So we're renegotiating. And I think you'll be fair. I think you'll be fair. And by the way, he, he started by saying that he's putting $40 billion into the United States for new car factories. Toyota's coming in with $14 billion. And they're coming in, frankly, to Michigan. They're coming back. They want to be back to Ohio, to Pennsylvania, to North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida. And what's the name of this special place? It's called Wisconsin. So they'll be investing very shortly. We've started already 40 billion with a B. $40 billion, and it'll be a lot more than that. The poverty rate for Wisconsin families has reached the lowest rate in 22 years. The unemployment rate for Wisconsin workers has reached historical, has never been this low before, ever, ever, ever. Think of that. the number one economy anywhere in the world, and it's not even close. Yeah. Is there any 
place that's more fun than a Trump rally. Can you imagine Sleepy Joe, Crazy Bernie? You look at the candidates, huh? I think Pocahontas, she's finished, she's a... but I still had more. <laughs> that was the end of her 32-year scam with colleges. But can you imagine any of these people up here doing what I'm doing? There'd be 200 people show up if they were president. If they weren't president, nobody would show up. Is that right? <laughs> Tell me about bad weather, by the way. We may have to cancel tonight. I said, are you crazy? No, can you imagine? I learned this morning. They thought you were going to have a big snowstorm. Right? A big, big snowstorm. The people that get it wrong the most are the weather forecasters and the political analysts. outside just like there are right now. We had 69,000 people sign up to come in. Now, what is this place all Like 10 or 12 or whatever. <laughs> whatever it holds, we set the record. I just was told by the owners, where is the owner? <laughs> I don't know what the hell it holds, but we just set the record. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's always dangerous. He said, yes, it is, sir. It's always dangerous. He asked that point, no, sir, I'm dead. They will, dead. They will take that answer and that'll be headline. Thank you very much. You saved me. Now, this is the record. We set records everywhere. And it's not me. This is a movement like we've never seen in the history of our country. Yeah. Put all their hopes behind their collusion delusion, which has now been totally exposed to the world as a complete and total fraud. The greatest political hoax in American history really has been. So this witch hunt, 
was never really just about me. It was always about stopping you, the millions and millions of freedom-loving citizens who rose up on that incredible November day. Remember that day? Yeah! And demanded a government that puts America first. And we're doing that with China. We're doing that with India. We're doing that with Japan. We're doing it with a great new trade deal that hopefully will get approved in the House. I hope they're going to approve it because it's great for the farmers. Everybody wants it. Everybody loves it. But we're all signed up and getting ready, I guess, in 30 days to put it in. The USMCA, like the song. Why MCA? USMCA. Yeah. That's with Mexico and Canada. It's a great deal. And uh, it's going to be very, really good for manufacturers and really, really good for the farmers. That's what we want. Uh, a lot of pressure on the congressmen and the senators because they have to ratify it. You know, they have to approve it. And frankly, with what you have today, maybe they'd rather have us have a loss than do something that's good for the country. Right? Because NAFTA is one of the worst trade deals ever signed yeah. in the history of our country. You look at around Wisconsin, but you still see the scars. Empty buildings. You go up to New England, you go to Ohio, you go to different places, NAFTA yep. was a disaster. Yep. And what we had, the one thing I wanted more than anything else, I want to make it almost impossible for a company to leave Wisconsin and leave other states and go to Mexico and go to other places, but go to Mexico, fire its workers, open a new plant in Mexico, hire other workers, and sell the equipment into the United States. I don't want that. And we're not going to do it. And it, it makes it virtually not economically viable. That's what I wanted. So uh, it's going to be great. I hope we can get Congress to get it approved quickly because it's going to be fantastic for everybody in this room and especially manufacturers and farmers and people aren't going to be firing people and moving their plants to other countries. Remember that spell we were going through before I was a politician, remember? Can you believe I'm a politician? I can't remember. <laughs> Politician. But remember that spell when everybody was just leaving the country, going into Mexico, Canada, Mexico, Canada. And Canada has been taking big advantage of your agricultural products. You know that. You know, Canada, we love to sing, Oh Canada. Let's sing Oh Canada, right? <laughs> we love to sing. But I came up here a year ago and I was with farmers and they were selling specialty milk. Now, you're getting killed for years. 297% tariff. That means you can't sell it. That's essentially putting up a barrier. So all of those things are taken care of in this new deal. And you're going to be opened up. And yeah. It's going to be good for everybody. It's going to be good for everybody. And if they didn't approve, I would have just put tariffs on the cars. I would have done that. I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do that. But I said, if that's not going to happen, we're putting tariffs on the cars, and frankly, we'll make more money. But the farmers wouldn't be helped so much, but you'll watch the company grow and prosper as you start. That's no good, right? So we like it. And it's good, actually. It's good for Canada. It's good for Mexico. It's good for us. We've got to get Congress to approve it. So put a lot of pressure on these geniuses we have over there. Yeah! <laughs> That's going to be a great trade deal, and we're very close to making a deal with China, but who knows? I always say, who knows? Because who the hell knows? <laughs> the deal is either going to be a great deal, it has to be. I told President Xi, a friend of mine, I said, listen, this can't be like a good deal for both. This has to be a deal because we have been losing to China for many years. $500 billion a year. Ooh. We have rebuilt China. We've given them so much, we think of it. And that's cash, you know, they can say it's surplus. We're giving them 500, how the hell can you do it? And as Prime Minister Robbie said to me today, he said, nobody's ever talked to me this way. <laughs> he said it friendly, he's a friend of mine. But he said, nobody from this country, no president.
president has ever sent us. You know, they, nobody ever even talked about it. We lose 75 billion a year. Japan, as an example, sells us their cars. The cars come in. No tax. They don't take our cars. Other than that, it's a very fair deal. <laughs> so the cars come in, essentially, it's two and a half percent, but essentially it's no tax. Our agriculture, they don't want it. We want to sell the agriculture. So they sell cars. We sell practically nothing. That's how we have these massive imbalances with so many countries. Now, China's the big one. Because with China, it's at least $375 billion a year deficit. Mm. Think of it. Who the hell wants, who made these deals? <laughs> <laughs> In all fairness to Obama, this was him, but this was before Obama, a long time before Obama. This has been going on for a long time, and all I'm telling you is, if we don't make a deal, we're going to do even better, okay? We have all the cards. Don't forget, we're the piggy bank that everybody's robbing. Yeah. We're, the, we're the ones. We're the piggy bank that everybody is stealing from and robbing and taking advantage of. But no matter how hard they try to stop us, they can't. Because our love for America will always be stronger than a corrupt thirst for power. This, I don't, I, I'll tell you what, you know, people say, oh, he wants to take over the country. He wants to extend. They don't believe I'm leaving in six years. He wants to extend. He wants to have presidency for life. These are sick people. <laughs> I promise at the end of six years, I'll be very happy, but you're going to be left with the strongest country you've ever had. Yeah. And he said, 
I was beaten up by MAGA country. Can you believe that? <laughs> now that's a hate crime, right? He said he was beaten up by MAGA country. Turned out to be a total lie. But think of it, yeah. MAGA. Make America great again. And by the way, I have to tell you, that case in Chicago is a disgrace to our nation. Yeah. So, so we have a decision. Now, if this weren't the greatest, if I really believe, and it's been said, but make America great again. Ronald Reagan used seldom, let's make America great. Close, but not the same. Let's. Master, <laughs> yes, you don't want the master. Yes. Too complicated. That's it. Ronald Reagan was good. He said, let's make, but he didn't use it. He would use it all. We seriously used it, right? Yeah. MAGA. And MAGA we got for free, because my whole deal was make America great again. All of a sudden, people were like going, hashtag MAGA. Yeah. <laughs> but we have a choice to make any decision. So, very shortly, we're going to say, you see what we did with our vets? We have choice. We're going to go over it. We yeah. have accountability where you can find. We have a lot of it. Okay. We've done so much. Our military is like going to be very soon in great shape. Yeah. We took 100% of the caliphate in Syria. Everyone said, oh, you're never going to be. <laughs> and by the way, by the way, and when some whack job that picks up something over the internet goes out and blows up a store and people get killed, I understand that happens. I understand, because these people are sick, they're demented. Yeah. But we nevertheless, in terms of a war, we took 100%, but you're going to have these cells, and they're going to do damage, and it's a shame, and we've got to stop them, we've done a great job, but we, we've got to be careful. We've got to be careful. These are sick, horrible human beings, if you even call them human beings. So we've got to be careful. And you know what, when you see, and I say this because we have a massive television audience, do you ever see so many cameras? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If somebody else were here, you'd have about, uh, like, none. <laughs> it's like the Academy Awards used to be before they started hitting us and their ratings started falling like a rock. <laughs> So make America great again. The problem is we've made America great person. We're going to have a couple of things to do. We should have had health care, but one man decided to vote against us at the last one. Oh. Even though he campaigned for eight years, repeal and replace, but that's okay. That's okay, because we're coming up. We win. We're coming up with a great package of health care. We're going to be the party of health care. We're coming up with a great package yeah. after the election. We've got to take back the House. But we got rid of the individual mandate. That's a big thing. That was the worst part. Of it. So here's what our decision is. Do we use for the new campaign, which will be starting soon? We have the great Sarah Huckabee over here. Sarah. Yeah.
They said he couldn't win in 2016, and he did. They said that he couldn't make our economy better, and it's booming. They said he couldn't rebuild the military, and he's done it. They said there was collusion, and there wasn't. They questioned him at every step, and he's proven them wrong every single time because of all of you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. President, for leading our <laughs> She's becoming too popular. I'm jealous. Sarah, <laughs> <the fire! laughs> she was wondering what was that all about. <laughs> She's been great. And Dan Scavino and Mike and the whole group and Madeline. What they've been through, they've been through a lot. They've been through a lot of phony stuff. The witch hunts, they've been through a lot. So we're delighted to be joined tonight by many incredible Wisconsin Republican leaders. A really great friend of mine, a man who is really the focus of what's going on in so much of Washington. Very tough guy, very strong guy. I call him Wisconsin tough. And I don't even know if you know it, and I don't know if you appreciate it, but I'm telling you, he's really good, Ron Johnson. Thank you, Ron. Great job. He's doing a big job now, I can tell you that. He's working on some things that are very important. And members of Congress, Brian Stiles. Brian, thank you, Brian. Glenn Grossman. This guy. Every time I introduce him, you know, I love champions. I don't care if it's in sports, I just like champions. <laughs> so he's your tree climbing champion, you know what? <laughs> For five years, and that's not easy. He'd go up and come down. He said the hard part was coming down because you'd get killed if you missed. <laughs> but for five years, he was the champion, the world champion, five years. And he's with us tonight, and I'll tell you, he's our champion. He fights so hard. He's working on a reciprocal trade bill. So if somebody charges us a tariff of 100% or 50% or 25%, we say thank you very much. We're going to have a reciprocal tax of 25 or 50 Yeah! What could be wrong with that? And he's leading the charge and he's got tremendous enthusiasm, but he's a great guy and he's a great champion. Sean and his wife, by the way, is going to win. <laughs> Sean Duff. Somebody that's been so effective, Mike Gallagher. Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks also to this council, House Majority Leader Jim Steinecke. Uh, Wisconsin. Senate President. Roger Rolfe, Senate Majority Leader, Scott Fitzgerald. Thank you. These are great people that have done so much for us. So we have other leaders in the room, but we all know who they are. They've been incredible. The Republican Party has been incredible. After just the first two years' time, America is winning again, and America is respected again all over the world. No more games. All over the world. Since the 
election, we've created more than six million new jobs. Nobody would have believed that. If I said this when I came here often, I came here often. Remember I came and they didn't like certain people that were with me. They booed the hell out of those people. But they liked me, that's all that matters. <laughs> if I would have said six million jobs we're going to create by this time, two and a half years, can you believe how time flies? Two and a half years already. I said the other night, I remember first night standing in my bedroom. I should say our bedroom. <laughs> With our great first lady, I said, can you believe? First night, I said, here we are. Here we are in the White House. And four years sounded so long away. And now four years is coming up. We're two and a half years. And no administration has done as much as we have in the first year. are the lowest income Americans. There's something great about that. And people that are now able to go out, you know, we got veterans choice. We also have employment choice because you never had a chance. You had to stay in a job that you hated or you couldn't get a job. Now you can go out, you have seven alternatives. You get a job that you love and you get much higher salaries. Yeah. It's great. And you've heard me say this a hundred times, but I say it again and I'll keep saying it. The unemployment rates for African Americans, Hispanic Americans, and Asian Americans have all reached their lowest levels in the history of our country. Yeah. And remember this, if I make any mistake, if I'm off by just a little tiny bit, those people back there will be headlines. <laughs> so I can be very fake news. They're fake. They are fake. They are fakers. <laughs> yeah. Their ratings suck. <laughs> yeah! Woo! We have cut 30,000 pages of job killing regulations 
from the Federal Register. That's an all-time record. It's never happened. We passed the largest package of tax cuts and reforms in our nation's history. And you know something that is very important to me and very important to because of you, to keep family farms, ranches, and small businesses together in the family. When you pass on and go to heaven so you can look down at these great children and if you don't like your children, don't listen to <laughs> Probably a couple of you out there to say, you know, I don't like the kid. I'm not leaving them like damn far. <laughs> Anybody in here like that, Rachel? <laughs> but on the assumption that you love your kids, and you love your family, and you want to leave the farm, you remember what used to happen. The estate tax was 45, 50, 55 percent. They had to go out and borrow money. I mean, sometimes the, the land is worth more than the income, and they couldn't do it, and the banks end up, and the banks fight them, and that's not what they do for a living, the kids, and they lose the farm, they lose the ranch, they lose the small business, right? Well, we have eliminated the unfair estate tax or death tax. Yeah! All of us. Woo! Decades of calamitous trade deals that stripped away our wealth, literally stripped away this country's wealth and our jobs and so many other things, it took away our dignity. When great companies would leave the United States for another country because of stupid taxes, because of stupid regulations, because frankly, in some cases, and the unions are going to work on this, I tell them, you're going to work on this. You gotta have a little flexibility because yeah. there are other choices. But now the choices are gonna be other states. They're gonna be competition. But you know what? Now America fought back and all of these companies are coming back into our nation again. They wanna be where the action is. They want to be where the action is. They're all coming back. And the era of economic surrender. Is over. That's what we did. We were like, you remember? That, I used to do it when I was a civilian, when I had no idea I was going to be running for president. Right? I had no idea. I used to say, what the hell is going on? In Michigan, they gave me an award six years, seven years ago. I had no idea. It was the man of the year in Michigan. I went to Michigan. I said, do you people know what's happening? You're losing all your car companies. They're all leaving. They're going to Mexico, Canada. They're, le they're leaving. They're going to China. Do you know what the hell is And this was before I was thinking about running for office. But I've been saying it for 20 years. And now we've stopped it. Those companies are all coming back. Yeah. yeah. When the Wisconsin Timber Industry was threatened, my administration took immediate action. We imposed tariffs on dumped foreign goods and subsidized products and saved countless timber jobs all across this great state. And you know that. You know that, show. Big difference, right? They were losing, you were losing a lot of jobs. And they were taking the timber from other states and other countries. Nope, not anymore. We're doing good. Before I took office, one of the greatest threats to the future of American manufacturing was the previous administration's Trans-Pacific Partnership. You think NAFTA would have been bad? Huh. This would have made NAFTA look like a good deal. Wow. The TPP would have decimated U.S. manufacturing and gutted America's auto industry. It would have gutted the industry. And they were dying to do this crazy deal. I also ended up another one, you know, the great Paris Accord. How is how Paris doing like that? How is Paris doing? Send all the money to countries that the people never heard of and raise their taxes. I ended that one too. I thought I was going to take a lot of heat on that one. <laughs> saved a lot of money, saved a lot of jobs, saved a lot of money. I said, you know, when I had this virus, I thought I'm going to take heat. I didn't even take heat. My people understood it. It was a ripoff. It didn't allow us to use our wealth. 
would have stolen our jobs. But just take a look at what's happening to other places where they're trying to do it. And we had something we would have never, ever been able to adhere to the rules. They were so strict on us. You know, China can sign rules. They're not going to be sued by Greenpeace. Yeah. If Greenpeace goes to China, that's the end of Greenpeace. You never see it. <laughs> so China doesn't care if they violate Greenpeace and some of these other wonderful environmental groups. But the United States gets sued. And we adhere to these things. It's a little bit different. We would have lost our ass on that day. That would have been a terrible day. And that's why I was willing to take the heat. But there was no heat. I'm still waiting. I guess at some point they'll bring it up. They'll probably bring it up. Bernie Sanders will say, what? I'll say, take a look at Paris on a Saturday afternoon, Bernie. How are they doing over there? <laughs> the yellow vests. How are they doing? I don't think so. Good. And they're great friends of mine, but I don't think they're doing so good. That's why in one of my first acts as president, I withdrew the United States from the one-sided, job-killing disaster known as TPP. TPP! What a mess. That was another one of these deals that was set up for the strict purpose of taking wealth out of the United yep. States That's for the right. benefit of those other countries that were in the deal. It was a one-sided horror show. America will not be taken advantage of any longer. The years we gave foreign nations free and unfettered access to our economy while they constructed massive barriers to American exports. We give them, you come in, take us, you know, it's wonderful. We want to go there. No, we don't do that. We don't accept your product. Oh, that's wonderful. As one example, we charge other countries zero tariffs on foreign paper products. But when Wisconsin paper companies exported abroad, they sent their product abroad. China charged us big tariffs. India charged us big tariffs. Vietnam charged us massive tariffs. Unfair. Reciprocal trade act, John. Reciprocal trade act. Look at Harley Davidson. Look at Harley Davidson. I met with them three years ago, one of my first meetings, Harley Davidson. And I said to the people, they're very nice. They would tell me, uh, tough to do business in certain countries. How are you doing in India? And they said, oh, we don't do any business. And they weren't even complaining because for so many years, so India charged 100% tariff on a Harley Davidson. But when they send their motorcycles and they make them to us, we charge them nothing. Mm. So I called up Prime Minister Modi. I said, unfair. He cut it 50%. <coughs> but he said, that's not good enough. Because look, it's 50% to nothing. And what we're doing is changing all of that stuff. Changing. <laughs> And that goes for military protection also. That goes for military protection also. Well, we are getting ripped. We're defending the world. We're defending wealthy countries that can well afford to pay us. But they've been getting this free military, or at least massive partial subsidies, for so many years, it's almost like habit. It's more habit than anything else. Nobody does anything about it, but we do. There's one country, we lose five billion dollars. Yeah, I won't say it. I don't want to embarrass it. The last thing I want to do is embarrass it. <laughs> they lose. We spend five billion dollars a year defending them, right? So I said to the generals, how much do we spend? Next thing, sir, we spend five billion dollars. Very wealthy country. I said, how much do they pay? Sir, they pay $500 million. So I called the country. Right? I called the country. So we lose $4.5 billion for the privilege of defending a country that's very tough on us on trade and various other things. Right? So I called. I said, listen, 
No good. <laughs> now, they were in a state of shock because they never got a call like this in 25 years. I said, it's no good. We're losing four and a half billion dollars. It's no good. We can't do this anymore. This is crazy. And he got very upset, angry. This is not fair. I said, of course it's fair. <laughs> he said, well, we'll give you 500 million more. Because the budget, you see, had already been set. There's only a month left, so you know. I said, you know what? I want more. We are. <laughs> so they paid us more than 500 million for one phone call. It took me one call. Now, I'm not bragging. I hate the deal. <laughs> Rhonda, one call. It's the first call they've had in 35 years. I don't think they've had it. One side and horrible deal. So I said, it's okay. You know, I understand your budget. You know, you go through a budget. But next year, which now turns out to be in about two weeks, I said, we're going to call you for much more. You got to pay. You got to pay. Not fair. We're defending you and you're rich. You know, we can defend people. They're not rich and they're being horribly treated and human rights and all this. So that's different. These are rich countries. But think of it. One phone call, we pick up 500 million. That's not terrible. But now we're going to pick up a lot more. And we have that with many countries. Look, Saudi Arabia, a very rich country. We defend them. We subsidize Saudi Arabia. They have nothing but cash. <laughs> we subsidize them. And they buy a lot from us. $450 billion they bought. You know, you have people wanting to cut off Saudi Arabia. They bought $450 billion. I don't want to lose them. But the military, we subsidize Saudi Arabia. I call the king. I like the king. <laughs> I said, king. <laughs> We're losing our ass defending you, king. You have a lot of money. <laughs> and he said, but why would you be calling me? Nobody's ever made such a call before. I said, that's because they were stupid. <laughs> yeah. So we're working to deal with Saudi Arabia. So many things. So many things. I'll tell you what, honestly, it's easier than collecting $113.57 from a tenant in a bad location in New York City. And it's safer, too. It's easier. It's true. It's easier. Okay, enough of that. But it's true. So we're getting ripped off from trade, we're getting ripped off for military. Uh, NATO, I'm all for NATO, but you know, we're paying for almost 100% of defending Europe. And they're killing us on trade. The European Union, the EU, is killing us. We lost $181 billion and we're defending them for peanuts. It's, it doesn't, it does, it, does this make sense to you what I'm saying? Time, your taxes go up, although they actually, because of me, have gone down. So, so. <laughs> the International Trade Commission recently announced that under the USMCA, American dairy exports to Canada are expected to surge by more than 50%. Okay? we got to get the deal done. Ron, you got to get that deal. You're going to got to get it done. My first 100 days in office, I traveled to this very state to sign an executive order declaring that we will live by two simple rules. Buy American and hire American, right here in this <laughs> But while we are unleashing America's economic renewal, the new agenda of the Democrat Party, it's not the Democratic Party, it sounds better, they ought to change their name, it's much better. But why should I make their name sound good? Right? The Democrat Party, radical, left, they should change that too. Call it officially the Radical Left Democrat Party. Would drive our nation into economic and financial ruin very quickly. 
And they will take your guns away, too, by the way. <laughs> Nothing is more dangerous than the Democrats' crazy immigration agenda. We want it solved. We're building the wall, by the way. We're going to have over 400 miles of wall. Now, we're sending many of them to sanctuary cities. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. We're not too happy about it. I'm proud to tell you that was actually my sick idea. But... <laughs> <laughs> oh. hey, hey. What they, what did they say? We won. I said, we'll give them to you. Thank you. They said, we don't <laughs> Yet while wealthy liberals preach open borders, they live behind gates and guards, they send their families to the best doctors and private schools, and while pushing immigration policies that drain the public service, and they depend on you, I depend on you, because we can change our immigration laws. I used to say in 45 minutes, it's really 15 minutes, it's so simple. But we need Democrats to vote on it, otherwise we can't do it. And they don't want, because number one, they don't want to give us a victory. We're going to take it anyway. We're going to take the victory anyway. Yeah. But they don't want to give us a victory on that issue. And number two, they don't mind open borders, and obviously, open borders bring tremendous crime. They don't mind crime, if you can believe it. The border crisis is also driving, and very strongly, the drug crisis. The biggest crisis we have, drugs. It's people, and it's drugs, and it's traffickers. 
Cartels traffic huge quantities of heroin, meth, cocaine, and fentanyl across our southern border. Drugs that claim the lives of 80, 90, and maybe even 100,000 people a year and ruin the lives and the families of so many more. To confront the border crisis, I declared a national emergency. The good news is everybody is here. caravan for 20,000 people. And we told Mexico, I said, listen, if you let those people come through your country, we're going to close the damn border. We'll close it. I don't care. They got to bring them back. They got to bring them back. Humanely, they got to bring them back. The flood of illegal migration is the direct consequence of Democrat-backed policies that prevent border violators from being promptly returned home. They're allowed to stay in our country, catch and release. They're allowed, you catch them, and then you have to release them. It is crazy. Congress has to fix these horrible immigration laws. We have to end human smuggling, stop human trafficking, Shut down sanctuaries, deport criminal aliens, and replace visa lotteries and chain migration with immigration systems based on skill and talent and knowledge. Ron Johnson's going to do it. Ron, congratulations. Stand up, Ron. Will you get that done for me, please? No, get it done for Wisconsin. Okay. Okay. <laughs> On issue after issue, the Democrat Party has never been further outside the American mainstream. I mean, it's crazy what's going on with them. Oh, do I look forward to running against them? <laughs> They're pushing a $100 trillion government takeover of the U.S. economy, known as the Green New Deal. We're going to rip down every single building in Manhattan and build a new building in this place. <laughs> They've introduced a total federal takeover of U.S. health care that would abolish the private health insurance of 180 million Americans. Many of you are in this room right now. And they are aggressively pushing extreme late-term abortion, allowing children to Democrat governor, and by the way, we have Scott Walker is here. protects Wisconsin babies. Born, born the baby is born. The mother meets with the doctor. They take care of the baby. They wrap the baby beautifully. And then the doctor and the mother determine whether or not they will execute the baby. I don't know. <laughs> Until this crazy man in Virginia said it, nobody even thought of that, right? Did anyone even think of that? The late term. But this is where the baby is actually born, it came out, it's there, it's wrapped, and that's it. So to protect innocent life, I called on Congress to immediately pass legislation prohibiting 
the extreme late-term abortion. things that we're doing are starting to kick in. We're going to get them down. And maybe on that one, we're going to work with the Democrats, to be honest, because they want to get it down, too. And we'll see if we can put it all together. But prescription drugs, look, it's a weak system, okay? If I told you how crazy it is, the web, it's a web. You need 193 IQ to even understand this web of geniuses they put this thing to lower drug price. It has 19 effects here and 27. We got it down, and we're getting it down further. We have the smartest people, the best people in that world working on it. And so, and we might be able to get Democrats in there. We're vastly expanding affordable alternatives to Obamacare. We repealed Obamacare's unfair and very unpopular individual mandate where you had to pay a fortune for the privilege of not having health insurance. That was very bad. And we'll always protect patients with pre-existing conditions. The Republicans are always going to protect pre-existing conditions. We're a 
unleashing American energy, getting Washington bureaucrats off the backs of hunters, fishers, farmers, and everyone who enjoys our great outdoors. And we're committed to providing, I think you'll like this, and Ron and those great congressmen that you have in this room are working hard on it. We're very close. $300 million for the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative. And we're building the new Sulaks to protect jobs and commerce throughout the entire Midwest. Sulaks. Now, look at the report that earlier this week. Interlake Steamship Company announced plans to build the first Great Lakes freighter in 35 years, just north of here, in Sturgeon Bay. How did you know? Yeah. 35 years. And that just means more jobs, more jobs, more jobs. To keep America safe, we are rebuilding America's mighty might. Yeah. We are rebuilding our military like never before in the history of yes. That includes brand new combat ships from Marinette and more than yeah. 6,000 brand new armored vehicles from Oshkosh. Yeah. My administration is unsigning the UN Arms Trade Treaty. Yeah. 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 We're unsigning it. We're pulling it back out of the United Nations. We're pulling it back out of power. All of you Second Amendment people, you know. Yeah. Be because we will never allow foreign bureaucrats to trample on America's freedom. We're not going to allow it. No. That was a President Obama disaster. Ooh. I also withdrew the United States from the absolutely horrible one-sided Iran nuclear deal. What an impact that's had. You know, when I first became President, the first week, I met with our great military people, and we went over problems. And one of the biggest problems was Iran. They were all over. Iran was all over the place. They were over. I've never seen anything like it. Fourteen different conflict zones. Yemen, Syria, all over. And small battles. I said, what do you do with these people? I withdrew from that horrible deal where they paid $150 billion to Iran. They paid $1.8 billion in cash, probably for hostage. By the way, I got 22 hostages out. And the other day, our great hostage negotiator made the statement that Trump is the greatest hostage negotiated this country's ever had. So, you know what? So I put it out. I put it out. Why not? <laughs> you know, a lot of times, if you're not going to brag about it, nobody else is. You might as well do it. <laughs> so, our ambassador made this out. And the press picked it up, and they were going after me. It's not true. It's not true. And then he called them and he said, no, it is true. <laughs> and instead of saying it's true, they stopped talking about it. <laughs> Fake news. Yeah. I recognized Israel's capital and opened the American yeah. embassy in Jerusalem. Yeah. In 25 years, but I said to our great ambassador, David Friedman, one of the most successful lawyers in New York, he became ambassador to Israel. I said, David, they want to spend $1.1 billion. We can do it cheaper. They want to buy this piece of land in Jerusalem, top dollar. I said, David, 
What can we do? And he called me back. He said, sir, we have a piece of land that's much better. And on that piece of land, we have an old building. And we're not using the building very much. And we can renovate the building for $400,000. Yeah. And we'll have a beautiful embassy and a better one. And we can have it done. And sure, we can have it done in four months instead of 25 years. So here's your alternative. A building in a great location in four months for $400,000. Or a building that will probably never get built, but let's say 20 years. For 1.1 billion today, meaning three, four billion dollars, in a lousy location that won't be as good as what we build. And it's the first time I've ever done this. He said 400,000. I said, David, it's too cheap. We have to make it. It's true. I said, make it 500,000. It's true. And it's open. We opened it like almost a year ago. And you know, in New York, I have a friend, he's a very successful guy, and he's very proud of his office. Because he used a thing called Jerusalem Stone. This is stone from Jerusalem. It's one of the most expensive, he considers it a treasure. And every time I go in, he says, oh, look at my beautiful stone, it's from Jerusalem. So we're building a building in Jerusalem. I said, David, do me a favor. Buy Jerusalem Stone, you're right there. We got it so cheap, you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> and the whole damn building is made practically of Jerusalem stone. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It's beautiful. So we got it open in four months, instead of 20 or 25 years, and we saved at least 1.1 billion. And it's just weeks ago I announced that the United States will recognize Israeli sovereignty. Yes. Over the Golan Heights. Yeah. So that's been under consideration for 52 years. For 52 years, they told me they've been studying it. They've had summits, many, many meetings, summits, people coming from all over the world, talking about the Golan Heights. Yeah. And then they'd leave. This is very important strategically for victory. Heights, you're up high. Very yep. important. Right. 52 years ago, it started. And I did it, like quickly. Done. It's all done. Yeah. We also recognize the legitimate government of Venezuela, and we strongly condemn the socialist brutality of the Maduro regime. And you see what socialism does. That was one of the wealthiest countries in the world. Now it's one of the poorest. And to those who would try to oppose socialism in our country, we see nothing but trouble. We see nothing but poverty. And we will say again tonight that America will never be a socialist country. Yeah. We believe that children should be 
taught to love our country, to honor our history, and to always respect our great American flag. And we believe in the words of our national motto, in God we trust. and principles that unite people all across this beautiful state of Wisconsin. These are the values that bind us together as citizens, as patriots, and as Americans. You joined our movement, the greatest movement in the history of our country, because you rejected the failures and the betrayals of the past. You were betrayed. You were betrayed by dishonest people, you were betrayed by stupid people. <laughs> you stirred down a corrupt system that enriched itself at your expense. You protected your family. You defended your dignity. You recaptured your destiny. And you took back your country with that great election two and a half years ago. what's happened to the United States. And I'm not just talking about economically, which is tremendous. We've created $12 trillion of value since the election, $12 trillion. And our primary competitor, very big, powerful competitor, has lost $17 trillion since our election. <laughs> they were catching us. If somebody else were in this position, they would have caught us already. They're not catching us now. We're way out in front. <laughs> With every last ounce of heart and hope and sweat and soul, we are going to make our stand. We are going to stand for liberty. We are going to stand for justice. We are going to stand for freedom. And we are going to stand for the sacred rights given to us by the hand of Almighty God. We are one united movement, one united people, and one United States of America. And together with the great and proud people of Wisconsin, we will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America safe again. 